How to calculate the dynamic payback period in Excel. We have looked at a similar example where we want to calculate the payback period in Excel. In this case, we want to calculate the dynamic payback period in Excel. How is this different? What we need to do here is discount our free cash flow forecast first. We have here a discount rate. We have an investment here, and then the future free cash flows from this investment. As the years go on, these cash flows here get less value in terms of present value because we want to discount them. Let's have a look at how this is going to work. Here, we have a discount factor of year 0, that's 1. Year 1 is 1 year of discounting. What we do is we discount this by 1 year. The discount factor is already 0.91. If we take the present value, you can see this one has the same value, but here, the present value goes down, discounted free cash flows. Then we go to year 2. Here, I need to correct the formula every year, we discount by 10% more, and then you can see the present value factor gets lower and lower. This also means that these cash flows ultimately have a lower present value. To calculate the dynamic payback period, we have to use the discounted free cash flows to calculate our dynamic payback period. We do the same as we did with the average payback period calculation. In the first step, we calculate the cumulative discounted free cash flows. That's right here. We want to keep track of the cash flow balance, but in this case, the discount cash flow balance. You can see in the previous example that our payback period was around here, and now, this is between years 6 and 7. Now we do the same thing. We use our helper calculation for payback years. We want to figure out this one, this year 0, but in this one, we want to know if this one is larger or smaller. 0. If payback is not achieved, we add one year to the previous period. If payback is achieved, then we keep the same year. This is part one of our formula. Now, we need to do a correction in the payback here. We take this formula here, which should be between years 6 and 7. We need to add another construct or condition here. The condition at the year of payback will have two parts, this one has to be harmful, and this one has to be positive. If that is the case, we need the portion of this 10 it takes to pay back, and you can see the yearly cash flow is only 54, so it's only a tiny portion. We say minus this divided by this plus this. We close the second condition. This one, voila. This one is better. To recap, this one has to be harmful in the year of payback. This one has to be positive. That was the previous mistake. Then we take these two here. We take the minus 10. How much of the annual cash flow is it? This is then the primary result in the dot 1. Then, we calculate our payback year. We say the maximum of our calculation here, so 6.1 years. We can also see that the discount rate remains essential in this calculation. If I set no discount rate, this would have been 4.7. But if we discount, we consider the time value of money, we demand the return. In that case, the payback period gets shifted out. If I increase the discount rate, the payback period becomes longer and longer. That's basically how to calculate the dynamic payback period in Excel. Visit the website and follow us to watch more of our videos.